Welcome to another episode of WSO2 API Manager. My name is Joy Ratnayaka and I am part of the WSO2 Solution Architecture team. Today we are going to take a closer look at the composition of WSO2 API Manager, what they are and what are the different supported deployment patterns. This is more of a solution architecture or solution design topic and you may be wondering why I choose this topic today. Based on my interactions with various prospects and customers, I do get a lot of questions similar to or around what's the composition of WSO2 API Manager? It comes as a single download or distribution. Does it mean it has only a single runtime or are there multiple runtimes? Do we need all of these different runtimes to run the platform? Can we just deploy and use only some of these runtime components? And if yes, what are the mandatory components? How many VMs do we need to deploy the product and its associated components? Can we deploy all of them on a single VM so we can reduce the infrastructure cost? And what are the consequences if you do that? We see many deployment patterns documented on the website. And what's the best deployment pattern? How do I choose the best deployment pattern from here? How to scale my deployment in the future? Does it support horizontal scaling or vertical scaling or both? Which runtime components are supported for scaling? And is it priced based on the number of components? These are only some of the questions we hear during our conversations with various prospects and customers. And there are a lot more around the same topic in discussion. So let's take a closer look at the composition of API Manager. And as you can see, API Manager comes with five different components. Two of them categorized as control plane and these three categorized as data plane. So if you look at further closer look at these components and what's the different use of these components. Let's start with the publisher. So publisher is a web interface provided for users such as API designers, API creators, API owners, API product managers. The main purpose of this interface or this component is that it allows API creators and designers to create and publish or onboard APIs. So this web interface provides capabilities such as creating a new API and providing the basic information such as API name, version, context and endpoint and also configuring some advanced configurations such as application security, throttling, rate limiting policies, mediation policies, caching and many other advanced configuration options. So once the API is configured or published, there has to be a way of accessing that API from the developer's perspective. So the next component is also a web interface. So this is again a web user interface provided for application developers. So application developers can access this portal and they can see all the API published or listed within the organization. And this portal, this component can be accessed by internal users. If your application developers are internal only, then this can be accessed internally. But if you have application developers who are external to your organization, then you can make this component accessible from the outside as well. So this is the interface accessed by application developers and they can for them, it looks like an API marketplace or API catalog or a developer portal and they can go through all the different APIs, see their documentation, try out the API, request for access, generate some test tokens. So all these capabilities are bundled into this web interface. And these three components, they do not have any user interfaces involved. So if you look at the key manager component, it's a runtime component 
which provides the API security. So this component is responsible for registering your application, generating consumer key, consumer secret, generating OAuth2 tokens, validating the tokens when a new request comes to the gateway, and revocation of the tokens, refreshing the tokens. So all these API security related features are provided by the key manager component. Next, we have the traffic manager component. So the traffic manager component also acts as a runtime component. It does not have any user interfaces. So this component is responsible for providing traffic management capabilities such as rate limiting, throttling, uh, 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 limiting with quotas, blacklisting, all these traffic management related features are provided by this runtime component. Next is the, the important component. This is the person who is doing the heavy lifting. So this runtime component, which is the gateway, is, this, is a centralized API runtime and this component intercept all the incoming API requests and coordinate these, with these two components, runtime components, to provide the complete API management capabilities. So this explain the functionality in detail and how these components talk to each other. Let's start from this corner. So API owners or API creators will use the publisher portal to onboard your API. And once the API is published, all the API artifacts get published to the gateway. And all the throttling policies get published to traffic manager component. And all the security policies get published to key manager component. At the same time, API metadata will be published to the developer portal so that application developers can access the API. So once the API is published, let's take a look at from the app developer's perspective. They will come to the developer portal. They will see the published API. They will go through all the published APIs and pick the relevant APIs, try out, and finally integrate the API with their application. So once the applications are ready, once the APIs are integrated with your application, then the end users will start consuming your API. So the API request will come to the gateway. Gateway will talk to key manager to see whether it's a valid request, whether this request carry a valid token. Once the security conditions are checked, next it will consult the traffic manager to see whether it's violating any throttling policies. If all good, then finally it will send the request all the way back to the all the way to the back end at the same time publishing usage data to the analytics component. So analytics components is a separate uh, uh, component which provides as a cloud-based cloud platform which does not include as part of the API manager product. So as part of the API manager, you have five components, the publisher, key manager, traffic manager, gateway, and the developer portal. So if you look at the different deployment patterns, let's start with the simplest one. So this deployment pattern we call all-in-one. We'll get into the details in a bit. So this basically provides an API manager cluster. So this represents a single instance. So this instance can be a, a, a bare metal or a virtual machine. So with this deployment pattern, we will have two virtual machines and, and both of them are configured to talk to each other in active active mode. And each VM consists of all five different components we discussed a moment ago. If you look at the second deployment pattern, here we have separated the control plane from the data plane, giving more room for the gateway or the data plane to handle more and more requests coming into the cluster. 
So as you can see, APA control plane, APA manager control plane, will have only the publish, publisher and developer portal and, and traffic manager uh, and key manager con components, whereas the gateway cluster will have only the gateway component. So you can keep adding more and more virtual machines into this cluster as and when need increases. So the last deployment pattern is basically, uh, as you can see here, we have separated the traffic manager component as well into a different cluster. Uh, so this is suitable in, in, in an event where you will uh, uh, see or you will have a lot of token revocation type of uh, use cases. So in this deployment pattern, the publisher, developer portal, and, and key manager will be deployed together as part of the control plane and the gateway runtime will be deployed as a separate cluster and the traffic manager component will be deployed as a separate cluster and you can add more and more VMs into the gateway cluster and scale horizontally to cater increased demand. So in simple terms we do support horizontal scaling. So WS2 products are engineered to support horizontal scaling rather than the vertical scaling. So it, it is best to add more instances rather than increasing the CPU count or allocated memory when you want to handle more traffic. It's very effective to add more instances so that it can it provides more room for handling your increased traffic. So in, in, in nutshell, it, it is best supported with the horizontal scaling rather than the vertical scaling. So if you look at this first deployment pattern, we call it all-in-one or simple HA, simple high availability deployment pattern. So we will have two virtual machines with all five components running in each, front-ended by a load balancer. And all these, both of these two nodes are connected to a, a shared database cluster. So we have no more interactions between these two gateways, like the older versions. Now everything will be handled through the database. So you, doesn't have, you don't have to configure a file level synchronization uh, uh, like what we did in our previous versions. And if you look at the second deployment pattern, we call it as simple distributed. So we have separate cluster for the control plane. So we use publisher dev portal to publish new APIs and all those metadata will be including the API artifacts and including traffic policies, security policies get stored uh, and get synchronized with the gateway cluster as you can see the control events will be communicated between the control plane and the uh, uh, data plane between the control plane cluster and the gateway cluster and the gateway will gateway cluster will have the gateway component and you can keep on adding more virtual machines more instance to this gateway cluster to cater more traffic and uh, so one other important thing is now the gateway cluster it does not have to get uh, connected to the database uh, cluster so only the control plane cluster will have a, a connections to connection to the uh, gateway uh, connection to the database cluster so this con this deployment pattern we call it distributed and traffic manager separated deployment pattern so as we discussed earlier, we, we have the control plane uh, a cluster where we provide the API manager, publisher portal and the developer portal and the key manager components. And when we create new APIs, onboard them with different traffic policies, security policies, all those information will be exchanged between traffic manager cluster and the gateway cluster. So as you can see, control events will be 
exchange between the control plane cluster and the traffic manager cluster. Uh, and also the control events will be exchanged between the gateway cluster and the traffic manager cluster. And the gateway cluster will have the gateway runtime and you can keep on adding more instances, VMs to the gateway cluster to create an increased traffic. So you do not have to scale the control plane cluster unless otherwise you have unless otherwise you have a lot of API lifecycle related activities happening such as a lot of users trying to create new APIs, publish APIs, version API, modify the APIs. A two node cluster will cater uh, a typical uh, deployment. And the traffic manager cluster and the gateway cluster you can in, you can scale out uh, depending on the traffic volume. And as you can see, this API manager comes with five different components. And let's look at what are the uh, mandatory components and what components can be uh, uh, parked or avoided when you are deploying the API manager platform. So as you can see, the gateway and the traffic manager are the mandatory components, right? So if you want, you can replace the publisher interface with your own interface. So you don't have to use WC2 API manager's publisher interface. You can write your own web interface to create and publish APIs. The reason being the publisher interface uses a set of product REST APIs behind the scene for, these, for all of these activities. So you can replace the publish interface with your own interface. So you can leave the WSO to publisher out of the equation. Similar to that, the developer portal also use a set of product REST APIs for all these features. So you have the freedom of writing your own front end using your favorite technology and consume our product REST APIs. So you can replace this developer portal with your own interface. And there are a lot of customers who have done it. So you can park this component as well and leave this component out of the equation. So why I did not mention key manager as a mandatory component, the reason being there are a lot of enterprises who use other third party products as their authentication and authorization platform. And they wish to connect the API manager platform with that product so that the single platform is responsible for providing their internal IEM use cases as well as the API security. So in that case, we do have the capability to integrate your own identity platform as the API security or key manager engine with the WSO2 API manager platform. So we can offload the API security related use cases or tasks such as application registration. It can be dynamic or manual registration and token generation, token validation, token revocation, all those tasks can be offloaded to your own identity platform. So few examples are Ping Federate, Auth0, Keycloak. Uh, so those are uh, some of the identity platforms we do support integrating with our API manager platform. So with that, I hope you are very clear on what are the different deployment patterns and what are the different runtime components available as part of those as part of that single distribution uh, in the API manager. I will leave links to all the useful documentation pages in the comment section. And thanks a lot for joining my session. Please leave a comment if you have any feedback. Thanks.